Hey guys, this is Scotty Wick back here to talk you through the next uh, bit of how to code uh, custom pinball games in Visual Pinball uh, X. And so we left off last with understanding all the play field elements. And now we're going to be talking through uh, collection and media elements and uh, rules and what you need to be thinking about. Um, and again, this is my way of going about it. Um, other people will uh, maybe attack rules later. Um, that's not the way. That's not the way uh, you know real table designers do it. So I'm going to do it um, that route uh, and try to help you guys uh, get get going along the right way. So so let's talk about. Um, Let's talk about collections. So if you're in table, um, and then you'll see here, well, let's go down. We're just going to go down this list, actually. Table info, no one cares. Sound manager is important. This is where you're going to have um, all your different sounds uh, that we'll be using. So if we play these, right, all drop. Uh, and I've tried to collect all my favorite ones. Um, and I'm going to be adding even more. Ooh, that's my bar block. So, that's, um, so this is where you're going to be uploading all your sounds. You're going to be using, I prefer, and again, this is just something my JP does, and, and I, I kind of agree to go that route, is that as much as I can, I put them all as waves. This will only take wave files, um, but I try to put all the files in here and not use the music folder. Um, one, it's just annoying to install tables that require you to drop things in the music folder. And, and a lot of people are going to get your table and never do it and never know how to do it. So, um, and who really cares about downloading a file that's a little larger? Like, I don't know anyone that really cares. We all have fast internet these days. So, uh, I make files a bit larger. So my tables are generally going to be over hundred meg and I don't really care because that's, that's nice. So anyways, you can put all your image, all your, uh, audio in here, uh, as a base, I will be releasing my, uh, orbital pinball base code here soon, um, as a base table for everyone to start with. And it will incorporate all these sounds in there. So you won't have to go try to corral those from other tables. But yeah, so these are all your different sound effects. Putting coins in and balls colliding with each other, all that kind of good stuff. Um, all right, so the next thing we have here is our image manager. And again, this you know this is going to be just our manager for all our different images and play field items that we have. Um, and so this is where you're going to upload any and all images that you're going to use on on your build. Uh, so you reference those whenever, you know, that's how when I'm here and I need to do my play field image, that's where these come from, is the image manager. Next thing on there is our material manager. Materials are um, things that images and sometimes not images will go on, like our metal um, and our, our rubbers. Uh, and depending on um, depending on the material itself, it'll have uh, different ways that the light can interact with it. Um, I'll use generally, a, a, you know, a whole bunch of them, and I don't name them very well because I just start using them and then kind of forget. Uh, but so for like these targets up here that I don't have shown, I'll use different colors of rubber for those. It's not actually a material as in the fact of, um, how bouncy or anything it is. Uh, it doesn't have any physics base to it. It's just as far as the look and feel of it. Um, so is it shiny? Is it not shiny? What's the base color? How does it, the light affect it? Does it have a clear coat on it? Is it not? All that kind of stuff. Um, so you can see at opacities. Is it, uh, how opaque is it? Is it solid, which is a one? Is it completely opaque or just the edges opaque? Um, so you can play with kind of different textures in here. Most of the time, our materials, most of the time you're not really going to be fiddling with it a whole lot, but, um, you know, you'll have your metals and your rubbers and plastics, and after that, you, I mean, you just kind of lay images on. 
Um, and each thing that's on here, so if I were to look at this, this deal here, you can see material is plastic. Um, on the actual play field, this guy would be rubber, but I mean, would be metal, but I'm using plastic because I like the settings I've done. Every item on here has to have a material. So if it does not, it's gonna show up bright pink uh, as a default on someone's table. Make sure you're not missing materials on anything. So all these, and you can have like items like a wall will have a side material. Um, I don't have a slingshot on this. There is a slingshot there, but it's not part of this. Um, but if I wanted to do it as part of it, I could have a slingshot material. I could have my top material. You can see plastic white. I do plastic white because the art will lay on it really nicely. Um, yeah, so everything has to have a material, even coming down to uh, coming down to you know your. Um, your spinners and your targets and uh, your gates, all those, everything has to have a material. So make sure that you do uh, go shoot, go through and make sure everyone is tied up. Font manager, uh, to be honest, I have never even used this, nor do I really even know why I would. Um, I would guess it has something to do if I wanted to do uh, different kinds of decals and writing. Um, but you're going to be doing all that in Photoshop, so I don't, I have no, no idea where I win and where and why I would ever use that. Um, the next thing is the dimensions manager we talked about in the second video. Um, you know, that's really just making sure that your uh, aspect ratio is something relatively standard, and that'll make it easier to fit on people's cabinets. So collection manager, this one's really important. Um, and so one thing you saw is just selected earlier and it highlighted everything there. Um, and so why that is, is that's because it's, those things are part of my A lights. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk, and you can see I have it group elements together. You don't have to do that for me. I'm, I, these are locked and I don't want them to move. So if I select a, any of these lights, like let's select this one, it's going to select all of my lights. Okay, so let's talk about why you would want a collection and why a collection would matter. So, um, for example, on this, which uh, a light for the light sequence for my, let's go ahead and play this, for my attract mode, um, we want this, we want those lights to dance, do all this kind of fun stuff. Well, to do that, we, it's, okay, so I, I'll have to apologize this, my computer, I'm running this in a virtual machine, and so it sucks a lot of times and <laughs> does it. You see this pink, it like crashes on rendering it, but you know, this is, this is my life. But you see how these lights are rolling through? That's because what I can do is I can set a light sequence on an entire collection of lights. So I don't have to go through and like tell it to go like, you can imagine if you tried to run these things back and forth like that on a on each one of those lights at one at a time, you you'd lose your mind. Uh, there's no way. Um, so if you do these light sequences, then you can or, or the collections, then you can run sequences on those, um, and it just as generally allows you to affect a whole collection of things at once. Um, without having to, again, specify them one at a time. So it's really, a, it's, it's a great way. And most, most of them, uh, most of the tables out there are going to have, if you look at them, a good batch of collections. So uh, the, they should have lights, they should have your GIs. I have my flashers as one, my skill shots as one. Um, sometimes I'll do things like with the metals and the gates and the spinners to affect those and to put sounds on those different things so that every post that gets hit has a sound, every rubber that it gets has a specific sound. And so then again, I can affect a whole big group of things at once um, without having to go to them one at a time. Um, so your collections are pretty dang important. Uh, just to make sure that you can affect a whole bunch of things at once. Uh, one thing I don't think I, I didn't show here is like the GIs on my table. I don't believe I have those on at the start. 
Uh, this is, I'm just getting into coding this one. Now you see that the, per the pink even got worse. But so if I were to start a game here, you see how it popped those lights on? It popped on the lights here, the one under there, this uh, light coming from behind those targets, the one at the bottom. Mm -hmm. there. Um, oh. So anyways, that is all because I told it when the game starts, turn on the GIs. Um, and so that's done again because that is specifically uh, this grouping. I don't have those select, so you can see that uh, if I were to go to that collection manager and I were to go to the GIs and click it, it doesn't have this group elements together. Um, and so that allows me to still fiddle with them one at a time in an easier way. Uh, once I get them set, I'll probably lock them together. Uh, but I haven't got that far on the table yet, so I'm not locking them at this point. Um, so that takes us through the media manager, and I'll be back with one more video tonight to talk about rules and my feelings about where you should start on rules. All right, thanks.